All right, welcome students. So this is the last uh, lesson of the chapter three, uh, Nubia. All right, for your notes, um, what I want you to do is, uh, you'll see it's just kind of uh, the main topic or main point, all right? Or you could also call that the subject. Okay, and then underneath it we have uh, various bullet points, okay? Um, so they're, one of them, the first one that we'll go through is going to be relations with Egypt, okay? And then after that, we're going to have, uh, there'll be various points there. Uh, and then the next ones that we have, there's going to be a name of a Nubian civilization, all right? And there's going to be three of those, okay? And then they each have points. So you can do your notes this way if you want to. Uh, otherwise, you can just, you know, kind of do it uh, the way that is best for you. All right, so relations with Egypt uh, is located south of ancient Egypt, but in the upper part of the Nile, because remember, again, the Nile flows from south to north. Um, for the most part, they had peacefully, peaceful, friendly relations, um, meaning, you know, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. We'll trade with each other. We'll, you know, we'll get money off of each one. Um, it was called the Land of the Bow because uh, Nubia had great archers, and that's what they were known for. Uh, many times the Egyptian army would hire them uh, for that reason. Um, Egypt valued Nubia for its rich minerals. Uh, you'll see towards the end of this there's a map. Uh, a lot of gold, copper, iron ore uh, in this area of Africa. Uh, Nubia served as a bridge for goods carried between Central Africa and Egypt. So a lot of the times traders would come into Nubia from Central Africa and then they would make uh, their way down the Nile into Egypt and Egypt would in return send people up the Nile uh, into Nubia and you know there's a lot of markets uh, in that area is basically what I'm saying. Um, and then you'll see that they constantly fought, Egypt and Nubia constantly fought with each other uh, to gain control of land. All right, so Kerma is centered around the third cataract of the Nile uh, and around 1600 BC expanded uh, into southern Egypt so it got larger. Um, it lasted around, around about 500 years, uh, and the biggest kind of achievement of Kerma is that this trade between Egypt and Central Africa, they helped create and foster it more. Um, you know, they devoted a great deal of energy uh, to resources for royal burials. Uh, you know, if you look at the dates of this and you also look at the dates of the old kingdom of Egypt, uh, you'll notice that they kind of coincide with each other. And so there's a lot of culture sharing going on uh, at this time, okay? But eventually they fell to the Egyptians and the Egyptians ruled Nubia for 700 years, okay? Um, from there we have the, we have Napata. And they can, in, Nubia came back to power in Napata around 700 BC. Uh, and they eventually took control of all of Egypt. So not just, um, their area, but all of Egypt, up through the Great Pyramids, up to the Delta region. Um, and so this turned out to be the 25th dynasty of Egypt were the Nubians. So again, towards the later end of the Egyptian um, reign, do we have this overtaking by Nubians. And the king kind of brought back the old Egyptian way of life um, that had gotten away from them because of all the different influences that were happening in Egypt at the time. Uh, and their rule lasted for around 40 years. And lastly, we have Meroe, all right? And so the Nubians, after they are ousted in Egypt, move back down to Meroe uh, and again become a big center of trade for the empire. Uh, one unique thing that they found there was iron, and iron could be, um, was a lot stronger than bronze or gold or copper. And so they started to create tools out of iron. Well, this allowed them to grow more food uh, because they could cultivate more land uh, more efficiently and uh, much more quicker much more quickly, sorry, uh, and they then created all these new trade routes uh, to take advantage of that. Um, they also created their own system of hieroglyphs so that they could keep track of their economy, um, you know, write down complicated ideas, a lot of the same things uh, that we learned in the previous lesson about the Egyptians. This is why people um, started writing. Uh, but again, like most things in Egypt, it fell weak in uh, around 200 AD. But we know that the Nubian culture still survives today because we found trace elements of it within um, the civilizations that live in that area now. 
All right, so here we go. Here's our map. Uh, and, you know, just to point out some things here. Again, you know, third cataract. Here's Kerma, the first one. Okay. And a lot of wealth in terms of gold and stuff. There's gold over here and, and copper here as well, if you look over here at our key. All right, so, but eventually, you know, they, they would go up into Egypt and then they get defeated and come back down. And it seemed like every time that they got defeated, they moved further and further south because here's Napata and then there's Morowi. So every time they got defeated, they continually move further and further um, south, up Nile more. Uh, it was, again, here's just a visual representation for you um, of where things were, the wealth that they had. Um, and again, you know, they had these uh, various trade routes, you know, would come in from here into from Central Africa. They'd get on barges and stuff and then make their way up the Nile or down the Nile, excuse me, uh, into Egypt. If you have any questions, bring them to class. Otherwise, we'll talk to you later. Bye.